All right, welcome back to the channel. Now, back on the Defender build. Uh, last time I left off with getting the back end of all the sound deadener in. Today, suspension time. Yes, cannot wait. These are the 2.5s, so these are for the rear, so remote res, adjustable, um, I've gone for the 2.5s in the rear uh, because they have that extra adjustability over the 2.0s, um, they're also probably better for heavier loads. Alright, shocks in the front, superior again. Now these are the 2.0s from Superior. Get these bad boys out. So these are only one way adjustable, um, slightly smaller shaft body. Um, so yeah, that's the 2.0. Uh, 2.0s in the front because they have a better range of travel. So I think these are 11 or 11 and a half inch travel. Whereas the 2.5s in the rear, I mean, only about nine and a half, I believe. All right, let's get these guys out and just have a quick look side by side. So that is the two and a halfs and the 2.0s side by side. There is quite a difference. I mean, look at the look at the size difference in the remote reservoir there. New springs to install as well. These are Dobinson coils. The coils that are in it, I think are sagged. Uh, I'm not really after a whole heap of lift. Pretty much just enough to fit 35s um, without scrubbing. So there may be a bit of trial and error with springs or coils. We'll see how we go. Good thing about Dobinson's being uh, local in SA is they're generally more than happy if you take care of them and don't drive too far on them. Um, you put them in, you're not happy with them, you can exchange them. So, um, it does pay to take care of them when you're installing them. Wrap them in glad wrap or something like that, because if they're way out, you could just pop them back out, head down, exchange them. All right, now, also replacing the rear trailing arms. With these out of the UK, these are Gwen Lewis uh, trailing arms. Pretty solid units actually. As with most lifts, you'll need extended brake lines. So, brake lines from hell. Um, now, with the shocks, you may have noticed I've got pin to pin mounting. That is apparently the better option for, um, just allows more movement in the pin joint rather than an eye joint. You know, an eye joint looking more like that at the top of your shop, which is pretty common. Um, however, some, I've, I've actually read that some have been known to snap the eye off under heavy flex um, as the axle moves up and down or as one side moves up and down, the shop doesn't just um, compress uh, or extend. It also needs to pivot to mount pin, pin shocks in the rear have these kingpin brackets, they look amazing. So kingpin fab over in, I don't know, east coast somewhere. These basically custom made to order, great customer service, um, and they look amazing. So these bolt in. And same for the front, to mount the increased travel shock in the front, um, gonna need to replace the towers or shock turrets. Again, from kingpin, made to order, um, as far as defenders go, Kingpin very helpful over the phone with exactly what will work. A um, couple of phone calls and he was very helpful, so much appreciated. I think that's everything. Uh, front radius arms, they are still to come, but I've got superior hyperflex um, or superflex, can't remember what ones they are now.
these bloody trailing arms um, are staunch. So I've just got to nip these up. Um, and then I can do the other side. Um, this is a pain in the ass to get off actually. I had to throw the old breaker bar on the end of it. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is not to pull both of the trailing arms off at the same time because you can have your um, diff fall down um, and just, well, just rotate and that can be a pain. So do one side at a time. But yeah, tighten this up and then onto the other side. The rear shocks, I'm going from a eye mount to a pin to pin mount. So the factory brackets have to come off um, and they're just covered in grease. Um, I've also just noted a bit of paint peeling off under here, a bit of corrosion. So I've just hit that with a wire brush and a lick of paint. Um, so we are just waiting for that to dry before the spring can go back in. Um, but I can take this off and then look at probably fitting up the shock. Alright, so these should bolt straight up into here. Alright, now I'm just going to quickly throw these shocks in. So these are the 2.5s going in the back from Superior. Now, I believe you've got compression adjustment on the remote res canister there. Um, and at the bottom of the shaft, if I don't lose all my shit here. So you got compression on the canister and rebound on the bottom of the shaft. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'll have to double check that. But I'm just going to throw them in and just get a bit of a gauge on bump stop height. So if I can put this in here. Well, I gave up last night after struggling to get this bloody shock in. Um, anyway, after about 20 minutes of wrestling, the rear shock is in. I just couldn't be bothered taking those out again. Uh, and I was just wrestling with the axle, trying to move it down. Could not get it. Back these off, gave it a little bit more flex, released the brake line, and just squeezed it in. That's her, not sure what I'm gonna do with this. I might pop this spring in. Now yeah, these just have a coil retainer at the bottom, and the top, nothing. I'm gonna have to put some limiting straps in or something, or not flex it out until I sort that out, but and I'm definitely going to need some longer coils. So I have already thrown in the kingpin bracket on this side and the trailing arm. That's just sitting there at the moment. So I'm going to nip them up. Um, actually, no, I'm going to try and get this shock in this side. Hopefully it's not as hard as it was the last side. I am replacing this brake line. So, I have those here. I'll bolt this either side, probably lose a fair bit of fluid, um, and throw this one in. Alright, so I've just thrown on a washer, a rubber, and a washer. to go with Nitto trail grapplers uh, this time. We'll see how they run. I have had the uh, the Goodyear Wranglers for years and they've been amazing. 
but just be good to compare something. Here's my new problem. Put the tyres on so I can suss out where the remote resis can go. So I'll worry about that later. I'm gonna get the front in. Front might be more trouble than the rear, not sure. Anyway, we have the 2.0s from Superior to go in the front. Um, pop bonnet, expose the tyrant from inside, jack it up, start undoing some bolts, I guess. Remove these covers. This cover here is going to be a problem because we have the coolant overflow. So I'm going to have to just pull that off the guard, sit it to the side. I am going to have to relocate that, so we'll deal with that later. Sounds like future Mark's problem. Will potentially be in the way from the extended tower. So, just gonna put that there. Here I'm going to replace this brake line at the same time. All right, you can see the difference there. Not much in the coils actually, um, but yeah, with the coils I may be swapping them out eventually. These is kind of get me on the road. Um, so the tower is about one inch taller. So that is to accommodate the Superior 2.0. So the 2.0s, slightly smaller body and shaft, and also you do still have the, the adjustment on the remote res. Um, however, there's not two adjustments, so there is no adjustment down on the lower, the lower collar there. much back and forth the problem with these remote reservoirs is and that's all remote reservoirs is you've got to find somewhere to put it um, but I'm thinking there anyway everywhere else I'm just not certain whether the wheels gonna grab it under flex or not so and I do want to put a splash guard there to try and keep, keep those in good condition. Spring and shock both in now. You can put the tower retainer on.
Now, one of the last steps for this suspension install is relocating the uh, radiator overflow just back a touch because this shock sits a lot higher. Uh, so it's got to sit back and out just to clear the top. So, just going to drill another couple holes. And then I've just got some small spaces to space that off, about 20, 25 mil. A couple longer screws. All right, now, as for mounting this reservoir, I think we're all good. You can see underneath there, just. I've got about, well, at least 10 mil between the bottom of the reservoir and the top of the shock, so that should be good for now. It's pretty solid too. Um, so I've moved it back in the engine bay 40 mil, and this rod here, supporting rod, I've moved that up about 40 or 50 mil as well. This is on a slight tilt, and the cap just, just sit snug up against that so it may wear that over time but see how we go it's pretty damn solid so i'm happy with that for now